Okay, so this is the urine images. Most of this is just about uh, what you'll see on a microscope uh, with the urinalysis. So you, you did the, well, you have the rapid test in your book and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about that. We talked about it and tomorrow in lab, we can go over that as well. So you're kind of responsible for specific gravity just to know the concept and then go through what you should see in uh, the urine and what you shouldn't see. So we tested for urobilinogen, glucose, ketones, bilirubin, protein, nitrite, leukocytes, blood, pH, specific gravity, and that's about it. So you shouldn't really see uh, any of those things. I mean, you, you, you can test the pH, and the normal pH of the urine, or the range of pH of the urine is, is 4.8 to 7.5. Specific gravity, the, um, the range is 1.002 to 1.035. That's about concentration of urine. So those are some numbers you'll see in your book. So it'll help you answer some of the questions. So I'll talk about some of the other things, like I mentioned, um, Billy Rubin, uh, we'll, we'll look at cholesterol that could be in the urine, possible stones from uric acid or from calcium oxalate. So let's take a look at some of these slides. This is what you would have seen and a couple of people did it and you're welcome to do it tomorrow just to get a real look at it. It always helps. So the first thing you wanna look at color from that light yellow or amber or light yellow to amber is pretty much what you expect to see in most normal urines. Red and brown is not normal, of course. And I mentioned in the lab that you should take the fasting sample, the 24 hour sample, because that'll be the most concentrated and that'll be darker than most of your urine during the day. A random sample would be affected by how much water you drink, uh, exercising, sweating, and eating. So that'll change the outcome of the, the color and, and the specific gravity, which is the concentration. And the diluted urine. So turbidity, deals with what you could see in the urine as far as cloudiness, not the color so much, but floating uh, pieces of, it, it could be blood cells, it could be epithelial tissue, it could be other metabolites, waste products that are in there. So you might see things like from food dye, you might see some food coloring, you might see in the urine that changes the color. So, you know, of course, be conscious of that other drugs, can cause different colors, the coating on the medications, beets, like those red things you have at uh, some people on Thanksgiving. And look at the cloudiness along with the color. So that's really important. And then the smell, um, again, ammonia is, is a normal smell, like, cause you're gonna have your nitrogenous wastes, like you're gonna have, um, Urea, which urea is the breakdown of nitrogenous waste of proteins. Uric acid is the breakdown products product of nucleic acids. And then you have um, creatinine, which is the breakdown of creatinine, uh, creatine phosphate, sorry, creatine phosphate, which is used for anaerobic respiration. Um, direct phosphorylation to make ATP in, in muscle cells. But these are all nitrogenous wastes, basically, especially urea and uric acid. So when they're exposed to bacteria, you, they'll form an ammonia. Now, ammonia is not in your kidney because that would be toxic. That would have to be oxidized, right? Um, hydrogen peroxide has to be oxidized in your liver and kidney. So ammonia is, a, is something you smell after the urine has left the urethra. And you have a fruity uh, smell to it, and that can be um, glucose or ketones in somebody who has DM, which is diabetes mellitus, or starvation where you're not eating any glucose. So your body goes into uh, gluconeogenesis, which is actually using other nutrients to make pyruvic acid to enter into the uh, Krebs cycle to make ATP, right? 
So the byproduct of using things other than glucose to make ATP or ketone bodies, which can cause acidic blood. Very important to remember that. Maple syrup odor, that's maple syrup disease is a, a genetic disease with a, a metabolic problem. Well, you don't have to worry about what that is, but it's an odor. Uh, this is important, uh, phenylketonuria, you might've seen this, PKU is the, you lack the enzyme or one of the enzymes in the cascade that makes, uh, that breaks down phenylalanine, which is an amino acid that if it's not broken down or if it's not absorbed, it's gonna cause a problem in your urine. So that gives it a musty odor. So the odors are important. Like, like the asparagus, right, is, is not everybody. This is, it's a genetic thing actually for people who have that smell in their urine from eating asparagus quickly. So unique odors to medications, to certain people with genetic conditions. So here's what you need to see um, for, the, for the quiz or exam. Uh, these are red blood cells that are seen with a microscope. You can see kind of they're crenating and shrinking here. Notice that, that you really can't make out the nucleus. So like red blood cells are anuclear. So you can see that in the urine, the microscopic. So this is red blood cells, which when you have red blood cells or blood in the urine, it's called hematuria. And you don't want to see that hematuria. So here's some reasons why, and, and, and take a look at this. Again, you can have it from urinary tract infections. You can have nephrotoxins, certain medications, trauma, uh, calliculi, which are kidney stones. These are white blood cells, different, and you could kind of make out a nucleus here, right? Within the cells, within the urine. So basically this is pus in the urine. And as I mentioned in the lab, this would be called pyuria. So these are cells within this visual field in the microscope, looking at the urine. So this is not just testing for it, you could actually see it. So this is white blood cells in the urine pyuria. And it could be a secondary to an infection, right? A, a UTI like we talked about in lab. These are epithelial cells. Um, and this, it, of course, can be pathological. You like squamous cells. Almost if you look at them, they look like squamous cells. There's a really good picture up here. This is a little higher ma magnification. It's hard to make these out. So this could be seen with a tubular necrosis too, or, or some kind of damage to the glomerulus could actually br bring this into the urine. So this is epithelial cells in the microscopic view of the urine. So some things that can cause that. Again, you're not really responsible for that. You just have to see what it looks like. So it could be nephrotic syndrome, which you're probably learning in lecture, where the cells are sloughed off from the kidney and all the way into the urethra. Uh, these are casts, which are like strips of, in, in this case, it's just highline uh, tissue, like cartilage that kind of forms from basement membranes throughout the kidney. And these could be normal to have these casts or like long strips, not exactly cells, but cells can form inside these casts, which you'll see. So these could be older um, casts made of highline. And you can see them in the microscope. So these, these can um, not be normal, but they don't always signify a pathology. So these, this picture is showing you hyaline casts. And there you go, just talking about where they can come from, from the tubules. And these hyaline casts are collagen protein. These are red blood cell casts. So this is a really good one up here. Um, because you could see that multiple red blood cells kind of confined in this little tubule. And, and, and basically the casts are usually surrounded by hyaline tissue. So that's why they form the cast. Like this, this one kind of shows, it looks like the cast. It's a bunch of cells in one little cast. So cast is this little strip, um, kind of looks like a titsy roll with stuff inside it, right? So these are casts. This is a red blood cell cast, red blood cell cast. This is a white blood cell cast. You see a group within a, kind of like an, in, in a membrane, but this is a microscopic view of the urine. So you can see all that. So that's a white blood cell cast. 
pyelonephritis, glomerulonephritis from secondary to infections, of course, because their uh, bacteria could bring on the neutrophils, PMNs, like we talked about, in a case of glomerular or pyelonephritis. Is a waxy cast, very old cast, granular. Um, dehydration, of course, change in pH can cause this kind of a look. Again, these are broad waxy casts. This one you really could see, and this is actual urine microscopy casts. Okay, it gives you a little background on that. You can go through the static PowerPoint to get the information. Again, I won't really ask you much about that because I just want you to see <clears throat> what's in these microscopic evaluation of the, of the urine. Now crystals, now usually crystals form and crystals can conjugate to form stones later. So stones are just large amounts of crystals packed together. So you'll see the most common type of crystals are the calcium oxalate, which can form ca calcium oxalate stones. And they, and they can be seen in the urine. But these are calcium oxalate crystals. They kind of look like envelopes, right? So know what they look like. Uh, on the quiz, you can see calcium oxalate crystals in the urine. Okay, and again, I'm not gonna ask you too much about the cause, but these are 60% of the calcium stones or calcium oxalate. So this is the most common kidney stone. Uh, but again, th they start out as crystals, don't forget. It. These aren't stones, these are crystals that will later form a stone. These are microscopic. These are triple phosphate. Um, stones here, and they kind of look like coffins or razors, right? Coffin lids, and this is triple phosphate, a buildup of these crystals from phosphate in the urine. This one there's a razor down here, right? And it's, you know, again, it's it's a acidic pH, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cause triple phosphate. So this is more of a alkaline problem. A triple phosphate. Uh, this is cysteine in the urine, cysteine, right, which is a uh, amino acid. And again, you can see crystallizing. This one looks like stop signs. So this is cysteine crystals. Again, a little explanation there. Again, we're not, you're not really responsible. This is more of a visual to go along with your urinalysis. This is important. Um, this is a problem with uric acid crystals. Remember, uric acid is a uh, the breakdown, nitrogenous breakdown of nucleic acids, right? Your RNA, DNA, ATP. So excess uric acid in the blood can lead to a condition called gout. And for some reason, it, it really attacks this area, this um, metacarpal phalangeal joint of the, the big toe of the foot, the first digit. And that kind of gets swollen and you call that a tophus. Tophus is that swelling, all that tissue and crystals builds up extremely painful. Here you see it in the fingers, which is not as common as here. This is very common pain, redness, swelling, severe pain. And then it gets destructive. If you can tell here, you're seeing the bones of the metacarpal phalangeal joint of the first digit of this toe, big toe. Hallux is being destroyed. So the bone is being eroded. And of course the joint is, is destroyed as well. Very painful. These are crystals um, that form uric acid stones. So these are kind of pointy looking painful things. You see that. So these are the uric acid crystals. And I think I showed you the stones, the calcium oxalate stones on the PowerPoint that we did in lab last week. So refer to them as well for this quiz, but definitely for the exam too. This is cholesterol um, and it looks like multiple um, rectangular looking bars all put together. Like this looks like you're looking at the top of a building and the roof of a building in different departments, you know? And this one here is kind of similar. This is a spooky looking person back there. I don't know what that is, but it spooks, spooks me out. So these are cholesterol. You get to see what that looks like in cholesterol, cholesterol in the 
urine, which there has to be a lot of cholesterol for, for you to see this in urine. And we don't even test that, test for that on the rapid test. This is um, excess bilirubin in the urine. And again, we test for bilirubin in the rapid test. So this again is kind of a one of a kind look of crystals. This comes in color. So this, this is the bilirubin. You have the rest look like cells, like white blood cells. So this is bilirubin here. 